Hi there, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for that introduction, Lauren. That's great. Um, as Lauren mentioned, uh, my name's Rachel and I'm from the Scottish Book Trust. I'm one of the school communities managers there um, and I'm working on the schools programme uh, at Scottish Book Trust. Um, as mentioned today, we're having a session on engaging teens with reading. Um, so this session is aimed at families and young people in lower secondary, so generally aged 12 to 14 year olds. Um, but we hope that we'll be able to, you'll be able to take away some ideas that are transferable and might suit other young people as well. So I'm just going to share my slides with you. Okay, so you should be able to see um, the slides on the screen there. Um, we're using Zoom today, um, as Lauren mentioned, so um, there's a chat function and a Q&A function, so we'll be inviting you to use the chat a bit later on um, for sharing some of your ideas and your thoughts. So please feel free to put any um, ideas or things you have there. Uh, and we'd just like to give you an introduction to Scottish Book Trust as well. So Scottish Book Trust is an independent national charity that promotes reading and writing to all ages and stages across Scotland. We run programmes for everyone from babies to adults and aim to change lives through reading and writing, ensuring that everyone from all backgrounds has like equal magic, equal access to books. You might be familiar with some of our programmes already. Um, we run the likes of Book Week Scotland and Bookbug, which you might have come across, um, but we also run a schools programme, um, which I work with, um, which is full of opportunities for five to 16 year olds and includes events, activities and resources for families to enjoy as well. We run the First Minister's Reading Challenge, broadcast author events with Authors Live, gift bags of books and materials to every P1, 2 and 3 child as part of the Read Right Count campaign and bring authors to schools through the Scottish Friendly Children's Book Tour. Um, for teenagers, uh, reading can often be seen as a bit uncool or maybe um, it's, it's not something that they uh, enjoy being seen to do. Um, so today we're going to chat about how we can overcome this um, and uh, the kind of activities that you can do together and um, encourage them to do at home to uh, kind of overcome this, uh, this barrier that young people um, and teenagers might have to, to uh, reading. Um, it can help if they see reading as something that they can do to further their hobbies. Um, How-to manuals are good for instance or books about current affairs and current issues. Um, if they're a confident reader um, but have stopped reading it's possible that they've become turned off by reading. Um, if they need to do a lot of it for school coursework or for their exams. Um, as their school reading becomes linked to exam pressures we know that teens can be begin to see reading as less fun than it used to be. Um, and if they're lacking in confidence, then they might need some quick reads to boost their reading self-esteem um, and technology can help with that as well. So today we're just going to provide you with some practical resources and activity ideas to engage your teams with reading and hopefully you'll be able to take away some inspiration with you today. So today's session will include um, making the most of resources and um, we're going to specifically look at some from the First Minister's Reading Challenge that have been developed, but we've also got other ones that we can highlight to you too. Um, encouraging teens to find new titles um, and read them through Bookzilla and discovering the best of teen fiction with the Scottish Teenage Book Prize. But as I said, um, please feel free to add any questions if you have any over the course of the session into the Q&A or the chat function um, that you should have on your wee toolbar um, and we'll get around to answering them later on. Also, please do share any ideas you have in the chat. If you like any um, of the look of any of the activities or any of the books, please feel free to Post them in the chat um, and we'll be inviting a little bit of discussion later on. So we know that reading is a really key skill for children and young people and it's central to their learning but um, why is reading for pleasure so important? What are the, the benefits of, of that specifically? Um, we just want to highlight some of them to you just now. So research shows that pupils who read for pleasure are more likely to do better in school, um, even in subjects like maths and sciences and they're more empathetic to the world around them. Reading for pleasure is also a proven way of reducing stress and improving the health and well-being of young people, um, which we know at the moment is uh, even more important in the current circumstances. And new research has shown that reading has also provided vital support uh, for young people during the pandemic as well, um, and that can really help, and it can really help support them in preparing for the return to school. And all of this is really important, of course, um, and it can be a great reason to make time for reading, but just as important, or maybe more so, is the way that reading can make children and young people feel it's fun and exciting and sparks their curiosity, takes them to worlds um, and on journeys that are real and imagined and they get to experience things in a different way for every book they read. And as parents you can help introduce that to the children and young people in your lives um, and share these stories together. So first of all we'd just like to take the opportunity to start off the session with a little bit of discussion um, if, you, if you'd like to take part and hear a bit more from those of you who have joined us today. 
So please feel free to answer these questions in the chat um, and share with us if there are any particular books you and your teenager enjoy. Um, personally, if, if there's ones that you enjoy, please share them with us. Um, or if there's one that um, your teenager always goes back to um, and they enjoy reading again and again, is, is there one of those that you'd like to share with us, please, please do in the chat. We'd also be interested here if you or your teenager reads for pleasure at the moment. Is that something that you make time for um, as part of your daily routine? Or were you keen readers and have experienced the tail off um, since lockdown? Um, the, the effect that lockdown has had on reading has been, uh, reading habits has been quite interesting. Um, so it'd be interesting to know if uh, any of your reading, yours or your teenagers, if, if they've been impacted by lockdown at all. Please feel free to put um, your thoughts in the chat. Yeah, recently we know there's been a survey that's um, been released by National, National Literacy Trust, um, which was quite interesting. It's shown quite a lot of the different reading habits that have changed during lockdown for young people and children. Um, I think it showed that more than a quarter of children and young people have enjoyed reading more during lockdown, which is really interesting. Um, and a third have said that they are reading more books as a result of lockdown, um, which, is, which is really interesting, which is really good um, that children, your children and young people have seen lockdown as maybe as an opportunity to read more, or maybe they've had more time and um, not been at school, so maybe they've been focusing on reading a little bit more. Um, and almost one in two had said that they were reading new books in lockdown too, which is interesting. Um, obviously not being able to go to bookshops or libraries and things to access these books. Um, so it's interesting to note that almost half of those they spoke to actually had read new books as well. Maybe, that you know, being in that situation encourages you to think, how, you know, try out new genres and things or try out a new title you maybe wouldn't have come across before if, if you hadn't had that opportunity. Um, so just, I thought it would be worth mentioning um, as quite interesting, but also, I mean, there's also the other side of that because while, because schools and libraries have been closed, it has meant that a lot of young children and young people haven't been able to access books or they maybe haven't had as ac much access to books as they would usually, um, or a quiet space at home, or the lack of school and peer support that they that they um, need um, when they're reading um, has negatively affected their ability to read and their motivation to read for enjoyment as well. Um, not having time to go to the school library, not having um, time to share books with their friends um, has obviously imp impacted uh, children and young people's habits as well. Um, Oh, someone's just mentioned that uh, they've read uh, their son read Cookie and the Most Annoying Boy in the World um, by Connie Hook. Yes, that's a, that's a great book. Well, I, I actually mentioned that in one of these other sessions, actually. That's really funny that you mentioned that. Um, yeah, and the first book, big book he read. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's, it can do wonders for children's confidence to be able to read a, like a longer book. Um, and it just spurs them on to, to go into the next thing. So that's really interesting. That's, it's, it's interesting that's like a kind of girl in STEM book as well. Um, and they really enjoyed that. So um, that's really great. Thank you for sharing that. Ah, yes, said so prior to this, he's read Captain Underpants, Dogman, yeah. That's a great, those are great books for kind of bridging into longer ones as well, like Connie Hooks, um, if they're wanting to kind of experience kind of longer picture, uh, longer chapter books and things, um, but are still more accessible if they're a bit more reluctant. Um, that's, a, that's a really good uh, transition that he's made um, between those books, that's brilliant. Okay, um, thank you for sharing your thoughts. If you are in the middle of just uh, typing um, a title that you've enjoyed or um, your, your teenager or young person has enjoyed, uh, please, please feel free to put it in the chat even if I've moved on from that. It would be uh, good to know if there are any particular titles um, that they've enjoyed, like that Connie Hook one. That's um, so good to know. Oh, thanks. I also like comics and Ms. Red's Alex Ryder Skeleton Key. Ah, interesting. I think comic books are such an amazing format for for children and young people. We sometimes there's more and more coming out about them, which is great, and uh, more variety in the selection, which is which is fantastic. So they're such a 
great format um, for children and young people to read um, because I think while maybe there's less text and there's, there's the pictures to accompany them, that's just that's encouraging them to use so many other skills as well. Like they're actually having to read what's happening through the pictures, which is really which is a great skill. Um, and there's so much that can be gained gained from um, comic books as well. So um, that's brilliant uh, that your son has has had such a selection um, to experience. So it's good that we're chatting about some some uh, books that uh, have worked well for for your uh, children and young people because um, I just wanted to highlight some recommendations to you all just now. Um, so if your young person has maybe experienced a tail off in their reading recently, um, or have become maybe a little bit disinterested by reading, um, you can talk to them about it and find out why. Um, it does sound really simple and kind of um, almost too simple, but it really does help you decide what approach to take when you're wanting to speak to them about their reading. Um, if they're a competent reader, then it's possible they just haven't liked the books they've read over the last while. It might be something as, as simple as that. Um, but if they're lacking confidence, they might need some different formats to boost their reading self-esteem as well. Like we've just mentioned comic books there um, and kind of books that bridge between longer chapter books and things like that. So um, there's a whole variety of formats that are available for children and young people. And you just need to, it's just finding that one that will help spur them on um, and pique their interest again as well. So here's a selection of books that are aimed at teenagers, um, which are all very different in format and content. So I wanted to just highlight to some, of, uh, some of them to you. So in the corner there, we've got The Black Flamingo by Dinata. Um, this novel has been um, getting so much traction recently and rightfully so, it's brilliant. Um, and it's a really beautiful novel in verse. Um, so that's quite an interesting format um, for, for young people to explore. And it talks about identity, self-discovery and embracing the real you. So it's a great book um, if your young person is maybe wanting to, uh, yeah, kind of um, come out, come work with their identity a little bit, kind of, if, you know, we know teenagers struggle with those kind of things. Um, so it might be something like that that would be, would, would be really good for them. Uh, Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo as well. And um, this is also a novel that's in verse. Um, so this is it's something that's kind of coming out more and more. It's like a kind of uh, less text, but, the way the text was used is so, so interesting. And it's also told in a dual narrative as well between two girls. Um, and it writes about the kind of devastation of loss, the difficulty of forgiveness and the bittersweet bonds that shape our lives. It's brilliant. It's another absolutely brilliant title. And these are all very quite new texts as well. Um, so let me know if uh, in the chat if you recognise any of these. Have you seen um, any of these in any bookshops or libraries or maybe your child has them already? Um, if they're a teenager, then they might they might have come across these books already. And um, let us know in the chat as well. Um, it's always good to good to know if you recognise any of the books we're talking about. We've also got the rest of us just live here by Patrick Ness. Um, Patrick Ness has written a lot of different books for uh, teenagers and kind of the young adult not audience. Um, this one in particular is very good because it's a paranormal young adult novel, um, and it focuses on the other teenagers. So it makes a big point of talking about the teenagers who aren't really involved in saving the world. It's just um, this other group that are there talking about the event. So that's quite a different, quite a, quite a cool perspective to go from. Um, so they're not part of the great events that saved the world. Um, and those great events are going on around this group of teenagers um, in this story who are all facing their own very different challenges. But it's all about finding the extraordinary and ordinary, ordinary life, um, which is quite an interesting take. There's also Heartstopper by Alice Oseman there, um, which is a graphic novel. Um, we were just chat chatting about comic books there. Graphic novels are similar to comic books, but slightly different. Um, so the story is told through kind of storyboard images, um, but there's still text and dialogue and things to uh, lead the, the story as, as you go. Um, and this is a really, just a really lovely story. It's, a, um, it's about two boys in high school, um, and it's all about facing identity, friendship, and first love. Um, so it's a, it's a really lovely, lovely one. I've also got It Only Happens in the Movies by Holly Bourne, um, which is very funny, very good, very good book. Um, it's a deconstructed rom-com effectively, that's, that's I find the best way to describe it, about how, how a girl meets boy, but it just destroys all of the cliches that you see in rom-coms. Um, and it's very, yeah, it's very funny and quite poignant as well. Um, yeah, just smashes all of those uh, rom-com stereotypes that you see um, in the real world. <laughs> And then also On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, you might recognise this one. And um, this is by the same author who did The Hate You Give, which is obviously a very famous best-selling 
young adult fiction novel. Um, and this is a story that's really firmly grounded in our present time. I think it's always good to point out books to teenagers that are very much dealing with current events and things, you know, things that they might already be interested in um, or aware of that are happening in the world. Um, that and these books relate to that as well. So that's always really good because they can relate to it in a different way and they can find, they can see themselves in the context of it too. Um, so this one in particular is about, uh, it's from the perspective of a young black woman growing up in America. Um, and it, it, it deals with so many different issues so navigating high school friendships, complicated family relationships, financial difficulties, social media, viral fame. And it's all, and all the per from the person's, pers the girl's perspective as well. So that's quite interesting. Um, and Andy Thomas also uses music in her storytelling in a really amazing way. So if your child is really interested in rap music, this might be something that would be really interesting to them because the music throughout it is a big, is a big part. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to highlight some of these to you because they are great for kind of exploring identity, um, but they're also all quite different. Um, some are quite funny, some are quite lighthearted, some are dealing with really complex themes. Um, but I think it's really important to, yeah, as I say, re relate things to what your teenager is maybe um, aware of in the world or experiencing. Um, because I think sometimes teenagers have a preconception that reading is largely about fantasy or adventure and it's not really for them. Um, it has very little relevance to their lives, but in actual fact, young adult fiction is full of really gritty and realistic stories featuring relatable teen voices, which is so important. And our advice is not to worry about maybe the more mature content that's sometimes found in these books, but um, just to use that as an opportunity to have a conversation with them about it. We've, teens are bound to encounter discussions of adult issues um, through school or through friends, um, and books are actually a really great safe place for teens to explore these feelings, their feelings about these issues. So we'd always encourage you to see these as an opportunity to have a conversation with your child about these kind of more um, complex themes and things and more um, mature issues. So when thinking about selecting one of these books for your child, if, you're, if you see of something that you might be of interest or um, you've come across something before that you think they might quite like, um, based on their interests as well, that's always really important, whether that's books they've enjoyed before or non-reading activities that they like, such as football or dancing, any of their other hobbies. You could also link in with TV too, um, and film and games. If there's particular TV shows on Netflix or films that they really like, try and link them in with those too. If they enjoy the storyline of a particular film or game, then they could explore books that are similar. And don't be fussy about what they read, um, because it's hard because you want them to you want them to challenge themselves and to be reading something you see as stimulating but um it's really important to remember that reading is a habit and as long as they're in the habit of picking up something to read um, it doesn't really matter what that is so if they're reading magazines that's really great too um, that can lead on to further reading if you can establish what they're interested in also remember that they need to see reading as a, fu a fun thing to do uh, don't worry if you feel that their personal reading isn't challenging them um, and don't force them to read anything um, that you, in particular because that'll just make them associate it with like we said before with school work and um, as something to be kind of not just enjoyed and sometimes reading should just be for the pleasure of it also if your child sees you reading then that lets them know that you might you find reading enjoyable and worthwhile too that can be a really really um, simple but effective way of uh, encouraging reading uh, with your teenagers and it also helps to spark conversations about reading as well. And if you're reading something you think your child would enjoy, you could leave it out for them to have a flick through. Um, it's just really nice to start having those meaningful connections around reading. So um, first of all, I just wanted to highlight some resources for uh, teenagers that might be helpful for you at home um, or helpful for you to point them towards. So the First Minister's Reading Challenge has lots of great free online resources that are available to download um, for you and for your young person. Um, this is a programme that we run to encourage reading for pleasure in all children and young people and to help everyone discover the magic of books. We invite schools, libraries and community groups to take part in building a reading culture, um, but also families can access some of these resources which are great for home learning. Um, these are all available on our home activities hub, which we'll um, mention a little bit later on. There are a variety of resources which are really great for teens um, and just really fun and flexible and creative activities that um, they can do at home with you or they can be done independently um, and they're full of lots of really creative ideas which are perfect for engaging your teen with reading and um, even if they, they might not even realise that you're <laughs> engaging them with reading that's, that's uh, always fun. 
For example, uh, we have a resource which is full of activities created by a teacher um, on the kinds of activities you can do with just one book. So if there's a book that your teenager is really enjoying at the moment and they're like going back to it again and again or they're rereading it, then they can do all these activities with just one book or if you've not got a lot of books in the house like, as well. Um, you don't need to have um, hundreds of books. You can just use one book um, for any of these activities. So one of the um, activities I wanted to highlight to you that I think would be quite fun for teenagers is having a balloon debate with your teenager based on this particular book that you've, that you've selected. So the pr premise of this is that all the characters in the book are in a hot air balloon and it's gradually running out of air. <laughs> so which of the characters do you remove from the balloon to save the others? That's yeah, so it's a kind of whole, um, a whole debate. Um, depending on the book, this might be quite a emotional <laughs> emotional discussion um, but it's a really good one because it, it helps them to justify the importance of each of the characters you know they might really like a character um, in the book um, but they're not actually that important to the plot so do you what do you do um, and are, yeah are they key to the plot are they a good or a bad influence on the other characters um, and what is their main purpose in the story you know are they key to how the story ends and to how uh, the events unfold throughout the rest of the story. Um, so that's quite, a, that's quite a good one to have and it's always good to help them kind of justify the different characters and think about the plot and think about well actually the timeline of events, what would actually happen if this character wasn't there and that kind of thing. So that's a really fun activity to, to get some discussion going about the book in particular. They could also make their own Monopoly style board game um, if they were in, interested in more, uh, if they were interested in making games and things like that. Um, and base that on the book that they've enjoyed or the one that you've selected together. You can add the related locations, the key events, um, create little character pieces um, and write your own rules for the game as well. For example, um, I always feel, I feel like I come back to this theme quite a lot. If you use the Harry Potter theme, you could have locations like Diagon Alley, Ministry of Magic, um, as places to buy property at around the board. You could always make it a really cool theme as well, themed around that book um, with the design. You could also theme your chance cards to things related in the book too. So they could be different events that happen in the book or they could just be something that relates to the story, such as if, it, again, if it was Harry Potter, you could say, you've been cursed, go back three places. It can be as simple as that. Um, they can kind of decide to give them a little bit of ownership over it and let them decide how much detail they want to go into or how, um, how similar they want it to be to the books. Also, you could um, encourage your team to create character cards. And we just mentioned about doing um, that debate about which characters are important. Um, you could also encourage them to create character cards based on the book, similarly to Top Trump style cards. Um, so it can include all their important statistics and the details of each character. Um, they could use a book like The Hunger Games for this. I feel like The Hunger Games is a great book for this kind of activity because all of the characters are have their own special skills and their own uh, talents and things, but they've also got um, the, you know, disadvantaged disadvantages you know they've got things that they're facing um in in the in the story so you could include the district of each character if it was like a hunger game style cards their special skill height weight and any other key information that you can come up with and then if you've really enjoyed doing that you could also just play top trumps with your the cards you've made too um so that's that can be a really fun activity as well another great activity um with you can do with your team that's really creative and one that we um, wanted to highlight to you is to encourage them to create their very own zine um, if you've come across a zine before, let us know in the chat. Um, basically, zines are short magazines, usually made up of words and images from different sources. Um, and making one is a really creative way for young people to engage with reading. So it can respond to a particular book um, they've enjoyed or maybe a key issue they're interested in. Um, they can use bits and pieces from around the house, like old magazines, newspapers, posters, or they can use online images and content to inspire their zine. It can be really up to them. Just um, have to give them ownership over it again um, to really channel, channel their expression. And we have a really great author video on the First Minister's Reading Challenge website with Sandra Allen, who is an author and writer um, that teens can use to get started as well. So she takes you through the whole process of how to put together a zine, um, the history of them, um, and kind of ideas for getting inspired as well. So if that's something that would be interested, is interesting, then please look at that. Additionally, you could ask your team where they would like to go on a reading road trip. This is another resource that we have um, associated with the, re with the Reading Challenge, which is a really fun activity. Um, this is also really great for finding out about the kinds of books that your teenager might enjoy. 
um, and find recommendations to point them towards. So whether they want to stay in Scotland, explore modern Glasgow or Neolithic Orkney, venture abroad or even go to outer space, um, <laughs> they can go there in a book. That's, that's the premise of the um, reading travel guide. And to help them find some inspiration and guidance, um, we've created this reading travel guide, which is packed with recommendations for books set in countries across the world. Um, an activity that they might enjoy, especially if they've not been able to go far in lockdown. So um, the idea is that you can, if we're not even to able to travel at the moment, you can also travel in books. So, um, and it's also quite a good way of finding out about books that are uh, set in different countries as well. Um, there's a really lovely variety on there. So we'd recommend that if you're interested in that for some book recommendations as well. You could also encourage your team to download our Bookzilla app um, as part of the First Minister's Reading Challenge as well. So the Bookzilla, Bookzilla is a free reading app uh, which we've developed for young people um, that allows teens to track their reading, um, discover new books with tailored recommendations, take on reading challenges and theirs and see which books their peers have enjoyed as well. From the initial concept ideas to choos choosing the name of the app, uh, young people were involved at every stage so it's very much been designed for young people for, you know, by young people for young people, sorry, I should say. <laughs> um, and the app encourages pupils to read for pleasure, um, whether they're already regular readers or just embarking on the reading journey if they're um, at the start of um, finding, finding things they might enjoy to read. It's also free to download and can be used on any um, iOS or Android device, so they should be able to download it, no problem. And this is a really simple way of encouraging young people to get engaged with reading if they've maybe been struggling to find time for reading recently. Um, you know, we were just saying that during lockdown, maybe more young people have found the time to read and they've maybe enjoying reading more because they've not been having other pressures. Um, but it's also, you know, extremely distracting everything going on and quite stressful. So um, maybe they've just not been able to concentrate on reading or they've not thought about wanting to read, which is completely fair enough. Um, and this is a really great way to kind of introduce them back into that and um, to engage them back in with their reading. Um, and they can tailor their profile to the types of genres and collections they'd enjoy, um, such as all things magical or roller coaster rides. There's a whole variety of genres um, and collections that they can they can come across. And it's updated regularly as well by the Scottish Book Trust team um, with the latest fi teen fiction as well. So there's always new recommendations on there um, that's just been published. And if they want to try new books, they can also set themselves up reading dares and challenges um, where the app will encourage them to try a new genre, read in an unusual place, all these different things. So it's all, it's all perfect for um, encouraging teens to just try out new books and you know, um, keep track of what they're reading as well. You know, it's, it's um, a really great place for them and it's individual to them, it's tailored to them. Um, so it should hopefully keep them engaged um, while, while they're reading. So just on the topic of Bookseller um, and thought it might be a nice opportunity to uh, invite some activity from yourselves. Um, we have a Bookseller genre quiz which is also um, accompany some of those resources I mentioned uh, just, just before. And this is really great fun for your teens to try out um, and could really help them think about other genres they might not have come across as well. So, you know, maybe they're really interested in romantic books and that's the only genre they like to read, but actually maybe they would like roller coaster rides. Maybe they would like um, funny stories as well. So um, this is a really great way of encouraging them to find out about just different genres, but also finding out what their genre is as well. <laughs> um, everyone loves a quiz where they get to find out something else about this themselves. Like, well, what potato am I? What genre am I? <laughs> um, so um, these, are, these are just a selection of some of the questions from the quiz. There's about eight in total questions, but I've only selected three here, um, just to give you a flavour of the type of thing that um, the resources include. So I'd love to you to take part if you'd like to. Um, why not try it for yourself? See what genre you're most like. Um, I know you're probably burning to find out. Um, so this is the first question, which is just how do you like spending time with your friends? And so if you just correspond with the letter that uh, is, it most, most refers to you. So we've got A, playing video games. B, talking about things going on in our lives. C, talking about our favourite celebrity couples. D, watching period dramas. E, discussing true crime podcasts and conspiracy theories. F, taking part in sports. G, having a laugh. H, finding ways to scare each other. I, daring each other to do things. J, going to the cinema. And K, telling each other stories about interesting things that have happened. So if you just pick the letter um, 
that corresponds with the answer that you put, um, that would be great. You can just make a wee note of it uh, where you are. I'll give you a wee minute to think about that and then I'll move on to the next one. Okay, uh, this is the next one. So this one is which of these first lines would keep you reading? Um, this is quite a good one. We use first lines quite often with um, as, a, as an activity because it, it's a really good one for piquing your interest and going, actually, yeah, I would quite like to keep on reading from that. Or you might just be like, no, definitely not. I wouldn't keep reading. <laughs> so uh, again, just note down the one that uh, you, you feel most relates to you. Um, so A, we have the shop from nowhere arrived with the dawn on a crisp November morning. B, it started with a house party. C, Josh is Margot's boyfriend, but I guess you could say my whole family is a little in love with him. D, there was no possibility of taking a walk that day. E, how long have I been here? I've lost track of time. Nobody's coming. F, on the pitch, lightning fast, dribble, fake, then make a dash. G, ask yourself, do I need the money? Robbing a bank isn't something to do to pass the time, like kicking footballs over the neighbour's fence or reading. H, there was a hand in the darkness and it held a knife. I, footsteps, running. Graham didn't hear them at first. J, he began his new life standing up, surrounded by cold darkness and stale dusty air. And K, the preparation was completed, so I waited. <laughs> These are all very different, as you can tell. Um, so which, yeah, which one do you feel, which first line would you, would you want you to keep reading? Ah, something, someone's uh, putting things in the chat, that's great. Okay, I'll just move on to the last question. Uh, you're planning the perfect trip, where are you going? So A, are you going to Middle Earth? B, on a journey of self-discovery? C, to a memorable place you treasure? D, to a well-known monument? E, who knows? We'll find out on our way. F, to watch your team play? G, on a road trip with your best pals? H, to a cabin in the woods with no one for miles? I, to a theme park? You love the thrill? J, to Hollywood, the home of cinema? Or K, to find the home of your favourite celebrity? <laughs> Great, thank you so much everyone. Um, so here are the results. I mean, uh, because there's only a few of the questions, you might not um, have a, as it, usually um, it's, it's the one, it's the letter that you get the most. Um, if, if you uh, do the full quiz, it will, it will correspond with um, the, the genre that you're, you're most liking with the bookzilla genres. Um, but here's a list of them all here. So as you can see, we've got such a variety of genres within the bookzilla app and there's, uh, sort of great collections within each of these genres as well. So the first one's All Things Magical, which is a mixture of fantasy and sci-fi. So if you've got mostly A's, or you picked A, then you might be quite keen on some fantasy and sci-fi. Uh, B is Shelf Help, um, about books that are covering friends, family, and real life topics. C is Heartbreakers, which is books full of romance. D um, is Iconic, which is for a variety of literacy, class li literacy classics. Uh, e is a mystery um, genre to read about cases needing solved and stories that don't add up. F is sports, so any books featuring football, basketball, athletics, and, and any kind of sport. G is quality banter for laugh out loud stories. H is scary titles for chilling reads that are sure to keep you up at night. I is roller coaster rides for thrilling books that will keep you gripped. J is books as is your books as movies. Um, so these are all books that you'll recognise from film and TV. And K is Idols. So that's inspiration and insights from biographies and other true stories. So yeah, as you can see here, um, there's such a variety. So there's a collection to suit every interest as well. So, but it's really good for encouraging uh, teenagers to try new genres as well. So there might be things they might not have come across or there might be a book they really enjoyed, but another similar books in a different genre. Um, so the app will kind of encourage them to, to do that and to try, try new books. 
Um, if one has piqued their interest that they wouldn't usually go to before, like Iconic or Idols, um, there's a really great selection of texts for them to try. And they can see their ratings by their peers as well, which is always really nice. Like the books on the app are rated and um, given star ratings by the young people that are reading them as well, which is really nice. So it means that if they see a book and it's got a five star rating, that's all ratings given by other teenagers and young people. Um, and that's there. Yeah, so that's quite a nice thing to um, for them to see as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was quite a, <laughs> quite a fun activity. Um, and this might even encourage you to try out some new genres as well. So I just also wanted to highlight um, some of the opportunities that come with other uh, activities that teenagers can do that can really engage with, uh, help them engage with reading a bit more. And one of those is creative writing. Um, it's possible that maybe your teen might find writing a bit more appealing, especially if they've been reading before and they've maybe lost a bit of interest over time. Um, writing, there's so many opportunities with creative writing. Um, so it could be a really great way of engaging them with their reading again. It might mean they've moved on to writing their own stories as well. Maybe they've um, stop reading because they're writing their own. That's, <laughs> that's always um, a possibility. So, um, and this can be a really great outlet for them to explore their creativity and expression as well. So there's a number of really quick activities that you can use to get their creativ creativity flowing um, and they really work well as starters and they're all available on our website if you wanted to download them um, and try any out for yourself. It really starts to get the young people thinking and also used to creative writing regularly. So some of the activities that we include are story cubes, which are dice with little prompts on them. So they usually have ones that are settings, characters and objects. And you basically just roll the dice and then depending on what images come up on each of the die, you, so you'd write a story based on those things. So it could be something like an octopus space and a magic wand, for instance, <laughs> just off the top of my head. So then you have to write a story about that. So those are really good for um, prompts and things to get you to start thinking about um, creative writing. We've also got Book Jenga on our website, um, which is a really fun game uh, we, lo we love to play. Um, so it's all about writing you can write questions about reading or um, prompts and things on that as well and just uh, stack it up like you would with Jenga usually and then you pull out the blocks and then do um, what the block says it corresponds with on, on the block. You can, so it can be, yeah, it can be prompts or it could be questions or it could be introduce a, char a new character or any of these kind of things too. Um, and again, we've got um, a how-to guide on how to put together a book Jenga if that's something you'd be interested in. We've also got story sticks um, ideas, which again are kind of similar to the story cubes. They're um, just lollipop sticks that are colour coded um, and they just have little prompts on them. So again, it could be uh, people or objects or settings, um, but these ones are more kind of not images, so they're more sentence starters. So for instance, it could be in the morning. So say it was a, a time for some of them, um, a woman as a, as a, as a person. Um, so in the, in the morning, a woman, um, got on a train. So it's like an action or something else that um, an event that's taking place. So yeah, usually the story sticks are split into kind of three groups, but they're a little bit more detailed um, than story cubes. And yeah, they can act as that could be like their first line, like we mentioned earlier. It could be like their introductory sentence to their um, creative writing prompt. So something like that is really good too. Or poetry stones as well. We have um, we have a resource on poetry stones, which is lovely. Um, which is just stones that have been painted with words on them. Um, again, very, you know, kind of uh, creative and simple ones. Um, it could be like waterfall um, or rainbow or things like that. And you just kind of stack up the story stones and create a poem based on the words that are painted on the stones. Um, and again, this is something that you, you can do at home um, or you can use the inspiration on our resources um, if, you, if you want to use them as a guide. That's what they're there for. So. Hopefully those kind of activities might be quite nice for introducing them um, and a wee bit of inspiration for creative writing activities. You could also encourage them to take part in our 50 word fiction competition, which we run quite regularly. Um, so the theme changes each month and having such a small word limit, you know, only 50 words, it's really not many words at all. Um, it makes it a little bit less intimidating for teenagers who are maybe getting started with their writing um, and aren't com you know, com com completely confident with it but also encourages them to reflect on their writing as well, um, like what words they're choosing and why. You have to be very um, particular about the words you're picking when it's only 50 words. So um, that's a really great uh, competition that they can enter. And you just submit the entries online, it's totally free. 
and the young people can win brand new exciting books and some writing materials as well so even if they don't um, win it's still a really good experience I think to, to end the 50 word fiction competition. We also have a Scots short story competition at the moment which is part of our What's Your Story programme um, at Scottish Book Trust and the theme this year is all of on Till All the Seas Grand Dry um, and it's a competition for young people aged eight, 11 to 18 to write a poem, a story, a play or a, Scot a song in the Scots language. So specifically in Scots, which is quite an interesting um, format for creative writing, maybe uh, that might be quite a nice outlet for your, for your teenager. Um, they've maybe not written in Scots before, but they might quite enjoy it. They might enjoy reading in Scots as well. There's quite a lot of um, new young adult fiction that's um, written in Scots. Um, I know Ross Sayers, um, for instance, um, he, he's an author who's written a couple of books in Scots, which might be interesting for your children as well. And we run a series of programmes just for teens, which support their creative writing specifically as well. So you can take part in some of our work, um, which could help engage your teen with reading and writing again, or they help them to try something new as well. Um, it's maybe not something they've come across before or realised that they'd enjoy, but we'd always encourage them to try it because they might really end up loving it. So StoryCon is our uh, top teen creative writing illustration event, which is it's very exciting. We heard it online this year and it was a great success. Um, it's all planned by the teens who are part of our storyboard as well. So similarly to Bookzilla, it's planned by the young people for young people. Um, so that's, I think that's always um, the best way to do it. And also Story Mag, which is our online magazine for 13 to 19 year olds um, with writers and illustrators from around Scotland. And if you submit to Story Mag, you also get feedback, professional feedback from, from writers, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, and it can be really, um, really inspiring to get some feedback like that for, for a teenager if they're or a young person if they're kind of new to their writing or they're looking to um, take that next step with their writing then that can be a really really great um, opportunity for them. I also wanted to highlight um, another program to you that might be quite good for um, engaging your teens with reading so this is um, one of our uh, schools one of another one of our schools programs it's BBC Authors Live um, and it's really inspiring uh, to watch an author event. It can be really um, engaging for young people to see an author talking about books, talking about the writing process. Um, and we've got a whole range of events that are available through Authors Live. Um, it's in its 10th year, so it's been running for 10 years now. And it's continuing to bring the magic of author events to children and young people across Scotland. These are all broadcasted by the BBC as well. Um, and there are events for all age groups, so you can um, yeah, you can access things that are specifically for teenagers, if that's what you're interested in. And this is a really good way to put focus on reading. Um, and it's also available on iPlayer as well. So um, BBC Scotland were showing some author events through Authors Live uh, during lockdown. So um, to support learning at home. Um, so if you're interested in catching up with some, you, you should be able to access some on iPlayer. But likewise, all of our events are available to watch on demand. Um, on our website so there's over 80 events there that you can have a browse through. There's some really wonderful events uh, such as with Kwame Alexander who's pictured there on the slide, but also Mallory Blackman and Juno, Juno Dawson so it's such, such a variety of um, young adult writers and some of these are really really great on a variety of themes as well so they cover lots of different subjects from LGBTQ to discussing racism and identity as well. And a couple um, I'd like to point out that I think would maybe be a good place to start is Patrick Ness's event. Um, we mentioned a text by Patrick Ness earlier on. Um, his event's really, really great because um, it talks about the importance of young adult fiction. So um, that's a surefire way of engaging your team with reading when a writer is talking about the importance of the books that they're reading um, is, is really great. And also our special National Poetry Day event, which was with Dean Atta, Rachel Plummer and Grey Crosby. Um, again, we mentioned the Black Flamingo earlier, which Dean Atta wrote. Um, he talks a bit about that in the event, um, but it's also about identity. Um, and it's a really just a really special um, event at talking about poetry, which I think as well is um, quite important to highlight to teenagers. It might be something that be, would be quite engaging for them as well. So I um, wanted to point that out to you. And finally, this is um, another programme that we'd run that's specifically for teenagers, actually. Um, and it's the Scottish Teenage Book Prize. Um, let us know if you've come across it before, if you, your child has, uh, your teenager has maybe read some of these books that are in, have been shorted, like, shortlisted for the Scottish Teenage Book Prize in the chat. The Scottish Teenage Book Prize is Scotland's largest book award for teenagers. 
um, and this year teens can take can vote to take part in the national event um, so we encourage them to read and discuss three shortlisted books um, and vote for their favourite either as part of their book club at school or they can just vote for, the, for, for, for their favourite themselves like what's their personally their favourite they can vote for it too um, and this really encourages them to express their opinions about the books and it's a really great way of engaging teens with reading when you encourage them to talk about why they like a book or why they don't like a book as well. Both are equally important. Um, yeah, and can they tell which might be their favourite just from the book cover? Um, have they read similar books to these? Can they draw comparisons between each of the titles as well? Generally, the three shortlisted books are quite different, um, usually quite different stories, quite different themes. So it really encourages um, teenagers to read more of a breadth of titles, but they're also absolutely excellent titles um, as as they would be when they're shortlisted for um, for this kind of prize. So um, it's a really great uh, program to get your teens involved in. So the shortlist is announced every year um, near the beginning of September. So this year's shortlist hasn't just been announced just yet, but keep your eyes peeled because it will be sure to be quite soon. <laughs> and um, the voting deadline is in the new year usually. So they've got plenty of time to read the books and get involved in any activities they might be keen to get involved in. Um, and then they have plenty of time to place their vote as well for their favourite. They can also vote, uh, watch videos of the authors talking about the books um, on our website and take part in voting and learning activities that are all, that are all linked to the books too. Um, and finally, yeah, just some other resources just to point out to you um, before you go. Um, you can use our website to find all of, the, all of these in, uh, ideas and inspiration for other activities too. Um, I mentioned at the beginning our Home Activities Hub. Um, this is regularly updated with lots of fun learning opportunities at home for um, children and young people. So you can filter it by age to find ideas that will be the most useful to you. So if you've got teenagers at home and you're looking for activities like the story, sto story sticks and the poultry stones and things like that, you'll be able to find them all on our Home Activities Hub. And also we have a great list of, um, we have great book lists and recommendations for teens on a variety of themes as well. Um, you know, celebrating diversity, STEM, things like that. Um, they're all on the Home Activities Hub too that you'll be able to access on our website. And you can also sign up for our newsletter for families. I'll just put that in the chat just now if you wanted to sign up for that. Um, which will keep you updated with all of the, any new resources that get added that might be interesting. Um, or any new events and things for families that come up over the coming weeks and months. You'll be able to first be the first person to find out about it by signing up for our newsletter. So just as a final kind of recommendation, a final advice um, from us, I would just encourage your teen to, you to be, encourage your teenager to be open to trying different types of books. Um, why not a new genre or some short stories? Um, and just to emphasize all reading is good reading. Um, and there are books to suit every taste and interest. Create an ongoing, ongoing conversation between you, your bo you both about what you're reading um, and make suggestions and recommendations to each other as well. Remember that the right book is out there. It seems some, sometimes that it can be a little bit um, difficult and it feels like you maybe are, you know, finding books that just aren't, they're just not interested in. And like, hey, it's, it's really hard. Um, but whether it's graphic novels or nonfiction, um, how-to books or something else, there really is something for everyone in the world of books. So don't be disheartened. Um, be patient and don't force it. And you'll find something that really interests them, I'm sure. So I hope that's been helpful today. Um, and if you have any questions at all, I'd love to take some time to answer them. So please feel free to put some in the chat. I think there was one that was posted earlier and I'll just get around to answering. And yes, please feel free to keep in touch. That's my email address there. So if you want to um, get in touch about any programs or any questions about things, please feel free to get in touch with me. Um, and I'm on Twitter as well. So that's my Twitter handle. So you can connect with me there too, um, if that suits you better. Uh, so someone's just said they've got one teenager who loves reading and another who I can't get to pick up a book. Any tips? She's also dyslexic. Ah, okay, yes, no problem. Yeah, um, we, there's some really, really great, um, I don't know if you've come across Barrington Stoke before. Um, they're a publisher that publish books um, in dyslexia friendly formats um, and they've got all of their books that they publish are in this format. So they're also great for children who aren't um, dyslexic as well because the books are great. They're so, they're so interesting, but they're accessible. Um, and they're in, in an accessible format, which is the most important thing. And they have a whole range of um, books that are, are perfect for, for teenagers. Um, actually, the book that I, I just mentioned, Scottish Teenage Book Prize, the book that won the Scottish Teenage Book Prize last year 
was actually um, published by Barrington Stokes, so it's like a dyslexia friendly um, title. Um, it was called One Shot by Tanya Landman. I'll just type it in the chat for you there, um, just so we have that for reference. Um, and it's, it's brilliant, it's, it's so fantastic. Um, and it's quite short as well, like a lot happens, it's really jam packed, but it's, uh, it's fantastic. It's about um, kind of, I think it's based on a real person and she was uh, based in kind of Southwest America and she's um, uh, a shooter, she shoots, um, but obviously at the time that was very much not um, the womanly thing to do. <laughs> um, it's all about her life and um, the struggle she faces and it's just, it's just brilliant. I would totally recommend that. But um, there's also lots of other great titles on the Barrington Stoke website. Um, and we also have a book list on our website too um, that might be of interest as well. I think the main thing, if she's maybe not that keen on reading, is just yeah, being patient with her, finding out about what kind of things interest her. If there's you know, particular films and TV shows that she really likes, then trying to link them into books too. Um, but yeah, I mean, Barrington Stoke have such a variety of, of titles, so there might be something there that might be helpful. And they're quite quick reads as well. So I feel like, I know with... Um, young people that maybe uh, have dyslexia they do it, their confidence is affected as well like their self-esteem is affected so um just being able to get through a book really quickly and you know enjoying it is quite a quite a big confidence boost for them and um, so that might be a good place to start Yeah, as I say, if you um, have any other questions, feel free to put them in chat or if um, you prefer, you can always email me. That's absolutely fine too. Okay, so, oh, sorry. I'm going to mention the chat there. Ah, yes, that's right. Um, someone's just said that um, Dave Pilkey is an author who's dyslexic, that's right. There's a lot of authors that are um, dyslexic. I think that's always good to point out too. Um, Abby Elphinstone as well, I think she writes children's books. Um, she's dyslexic and, and then they're quite good at talking about it as well and talking about it as part of the writing process, which might also be interesting for um, young people who have dyslexia to understand that it's not just them and they can relate to them and see that, you know, they can also be a writer and um, that it, it won't um, affect them um, or hinder them from becoming a writer. I think that's always quite nice to point out. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Um, yes, as you said, Scott has a tab for dyslexic kids. There are so many of them. Yes, definitely. I'll make sure make that suggestion because we can add tabs in to filter our book lists and things. And I'll definitely um, suggest that. I think that's a um, very good point, actually. There is a lot of them I can... Um, totally uh, realise we do have a lot of book lists. <laughs> um, so it's always, it's always good to know how we can, how we can improve um, our website to make it easier for people to access. Okay, great. Um, fab. If that's all the questions we have just now, then that's great. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that um, that was uh, interesting and you've been able to take some ideas away with you. Um, let us know how you got on. Um, if, uh, if any activities work really well or um, your teenager uses Bookzilla, please keep in touch and let us know. We'd, um, we'd love to hear that. Um, and thank you for uh, joining us today. I hope it's been interesting. And um, yes, we'll speak soon. Goodbye.